let's settle this once and for all. Is the Tantan X68 actually slower than a real specialized Tarmac SL8 or does it just feel different? I recently made a YouTube short that hit over 100k views where I swapped bikes with a guy on a $16,000 specialized Tarmac SL7 and I said my $3,000 Tantan X68, which is basically a carbon copy of the SL8, felt faster. The clip blew up and the comment section exploded. Some people thought it was BS and a lot of people agreed with me. And specifically, I had a lot of comments in relation to Patrick Lee video who also reviewed the X68 who said the opposite. He said that the frame lacked stiffness and felt sluggish compared to a genuine Tarmac SL8. He also mentioned challenges aligning the disc brake calipers which is something I didn't experience at all. So who's right? Well I've been riding the X68 for a few months now including sprinting on it and racing on it and to me it feels just as fast and solid as any high-end bike would. So in today's video I'm going to go full science mode and do a deep dive into what frame stiffness actually means when it really starts to affect performance and how two frames that feel different can still perform exactly the same. Now, when people talk about the stiffness of a bike frame, they're talking about how much the frame flexes when you apply a force into it, mainly down at the bottom bracket and up at the head tube. And engineers can actually measure this empirically. They bolt the frame into a jig, they push on the cranks with a hydraulic ram, and they record how many millimeters the frame bends. This is where you get numbers like 80 newtons per millimeter of BB stiffness or 70 newton meters per degree of head tube stiffness. But remember, out on the road, the frame is part of a bigger system and your wheels, bars, seat posts and tires and even your body all flex a lot more than the frame does. So once a frame reaches a certain threshold of stiffness, extra stiffness doesn't actually change how fast you go, it only changes how the bike feels. Labs like Tour Magazine and the Zedler Institute have tested hundreds of frames over the last decade. They've found that modern race bikes typically have around 60 to 90 newtons per millimeter of bottom bracket stiffness and 90 to 120 newton meters per degree of stiffness at the head tube. And here's the crucial thing. Once you're past roughly 60 newtons per millimeter and 90 newton meters per degree, you've cleared the point where extra stiffness has any measurable impact on speed. Below that point, the flex in the frame can actually cause a reduction in speed due to brake rub and drivetrain efficiency losses. But above that point, more stiffness doesn't actually make the bike faster. It just changes how the bike is perceived. And the Tantan frame clears that threshold. It's easily within the same performance bands as bikes like the real Tarmac SL8, the TCR Advanced SL and the Super 6 Evo. So when people like Patrick Lino say the Tantan is 70% as good as a real Tarmac SL8, that doesn't mean that it's 30% slower at a given power output. It means it just feels different based on the feedback and vibration of the frame. So the difference is mostly neurological rather than mechanical. Humans sense stiffness through how quickly vibrations and micro accelerations travel through the frame to the body. And a slightly softer frame delays that feedback by a few milliseconds. So your brain interprets it as less snappy, even if the actual forward speed is identical. This happens because a small amount of energy gets stored as elastic potential energy when the frame flexes and is then released a few milliseconds later. And almost all of that energy comes back within the same pedal stroke. So the losses are very tiny, under one watt, even at 1500 watt sprints for both stiff and compliant frames. But your brain can actually detect the differences in the rebound delay, which is why compliant frames feel less snappy. So it's a perceptual difference, not a performance one. Stiffer frames might inspire more confidence, but that's a psychological effect, not a mechanical one. That's why a Tan 10 frame, even if it was slightly less stiff than a specialized Tarmac SL8 frame, would go the exact same speed at a given power output, assuming everything else is equal. The only bikes that don't fall above the stiffness threshold required for maximum speed are some ultra cheap Chinese open mold carbon frame bikes and some older carbon bikes that have super thin seat stays. These kind of frames can flex enough to cause chain or rotor rub, but any modern aero road frame, including the Tantan X68, is way past that level. So there's no lost power there. And once you're above that stiffness threshold, the only two things that affect frame speed are weight and aerodynamics. In terms of aerodynamics, the X68 uses basically the same external mold as the SL8. So the shape of the down tube, the top tube, the seat post, the fork are basically the same. So we would expect them to perform identically aerodynamically. Now in terms of weight, the Tantan frame is about 150 grams heavier. 
And let's put that in context. If the rider in the bike weighs 80 kilos total, that's a 0.2% difference. And on a 5% climb at 300 watts, it's roughly 0.5 watts, which is less than a third of a second over a 10 minute climb. And on flat ground, it's basically negligible. This is why from a physics standpoint, I feel confident to say that the Tantan frame is basically just as good as an SL8 frame because it's the same aerodynamically, the weight is almost identical and the stiffness is above that critical threshold. Let's quickly talk about marketing myths because bike brands love to push the narrative that stiffness to weight ratio improves the performance of a bike. But the reality is that both of these bikes clear that threshold easily. So even if the specialized SL8 had a few percentage points greater stiffness, that would only change the vibration and feel, not the actual speed of the bike. So basically the idea of stiffness to weight is a marketing myth that doesn't make any difference to the speed of a bike as long as it's above that stiffness threshold. A super stiff front end will send sharper higher frequency vibrations to your hands which your brain interprets as snappy and a slightly less stiff frame will dampen those vibrations and feel a bit smoother. But as long as they're above the stiffness threshold, both frames will go the same speed at the same watts but just have a different sensation. In terms of subjective ride quality, I've found the Tantan -tan to be very stiff and responsive and my viewers have also noted the stiffness of Chinese frames. Whereas in Patrick Lino's video, he mentioned that it lacked snap. And there's a few factors that can account for this difference. Firstly, we were using different tires, wheels, and cockpit. And these can all have a huge impact on system stiffness that affect how snappy the bike feels. And secondly, in Patrick's video, he mentioned that he was getting disc rub and that can cost real watts. If you're evaluating a bike that includes disc brake rub, you're effectively testing a different bike because that can cost between five to 20 watts, which has a real impact on speed. I had my two Tantan -tan bikes built up with Shimano 105 Di2, one that was pre-assembled and one that was not, and I had no issue with brake rubbing or caliper alignment on either bike. Whereas in Patrick's case, he bought the frame alone and built it up with a SRAM Force and Red group set and reported difficulty facing the caliper mounts. Tram calipers tend to have very tight pad clearance and pistons that move evenly, so they don't really self-center much, which means that even a tiny misalignment like fractions of a millimeter can cause constant brake rub. So it's not that Patrick's frame was bad or defective, it's just the SRAM brakes have really tight tolerances, meaning a tiny misalignment can cause the pads to rub. Whereas Shimano brakes tend to be more forgiving and can self-center better, which might be why I've never had any issues with brake rubbing. So the bigger picture here is that how a bike is set up can massively affect how it feels. Different group set wheels and cockpit can transform a bike from smooth to snappy and factors like disc brake rub which causes real friction and wattage losses can also play a role in how the bike ultimately feels. And the only two factors that make any meaningful difference in terms of the speed of a frame are its aerodynamics and its weight because frame stiffness once it's above that key threshold makes zero difference to speed. So is the Tantan X68 slower than the Tarmac SL8? I don't believe it is. If you push the same watts you'll go the exact same speed. If there are any mechanical engineers watching, please comment with a theory as to how the SL8 frame would be faster than the Tantan -tan frame. Because from what I can tell, if you buy an SL8 frame, you're paying 10 times the cost for some pretty stickers and slightly more compliance. But no extra speed compared to the Tantan, -tan, which I believe is a stiffer bike, even if it is a slightly harsher ride. The guy I swapped bikes with told me if I slapped S-Work stickers on the Tantan, -tan, I could start a new business and that should say it all. So I hope this was educational. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And comment down below, would you buy a $16,000 Tarmac or a $3,000 Tantan?